Welcome back to The Big Show. I'm Mitch English along with Andrea Jackson, Matt Doolittle. The, our next guest is Dan Pontefract. He's got a new book out. It's called Work Life Bloom. Dan, thank you so much and welcome to Daily Flash. You know, inside your book, you offer up an updated look at the modern workforce and what you say is the work-life balance is actually a myth. Explain all that and how so. Hey, Mitch, great to be here. Work-life balance, it's about as useful as buying me a holiday comb for a gift, <laughs> given my state of hair. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, leaders have been espousing this myth for pretty much decades, as if work-life balance is a thing. So I'm asking you, Mitch, do you uh, do you have your phone beside you at night? Uh, is that your new alarm clock? Yes. but Yeah, 100% yeah. it is. Yeah, I, turn, I, I put it on the thing, and it lights up as my alarm clock, 100%. Right. And so when you're in bed or when you wake up, what's the first thing you're doing? You're checking yes. notices, messages, Absolutely. right? Yeah, it, okay. it even does so, it for me. I don't even have to look. I wake up, it tells me everything I've missed. Okay. So there's just one little point. It's th that's, that's a microcosm of what's happening. Our lives have been interwoven between life and work. And uh, leaders are sitting there saying, we only care about you for your work. Okay. Yet they're coming into, quote, work, Mitch, anxious. They're obnoxiously isolated. They're lonely. They're stressed. They're obese. What's <laughs> happening? We've got it wrong, Mitch. I, I, I agree with you on that in the sense that our work is always with us. If an, if an email is sent at uh, 9 o'clock at night, sometimes you're expected to answer that sort of thing. Is that the direction you're saying is that we are not letting go of work and that's why there is no work-life uh, split? That's part of the reason. Like, it's there's a culpability. That means we can blame ourselves, Mitch. Fancy word there for a show like this, right? But right. Uh, ultimately, what we're what we're trying to say is leaders are also culpable. So what they're doing is they're pushing people to the limit, to the max, to the edge of the canyon, and we're falling over. Okay. And so unless we start taking considerations for what makes us better human beings and stop saying we want you to be your most authentic self at work, how about? Well, what's your best, and how can I help you be your best given the situation? I, I, I can appreciate that for sure. And well, but talking about work, the ups and downs that we all experience in life, how does that affect our work? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, we'll have situations where we might not be, quote, performing. Uh, we might be on sort of uh, cruise control. But a leader has to ask themselves, well, is that okay? Should everybody, for example, Mitch, be engaged at work? Okay. And we've we've taken hostage of that work. So if we're not balanced, not an entire team is going to be uh, completely engaged all the time because life and work have ups and downs. And I think that's the myopia of leaders is that they expect their entire team to be high performing at all times. Mitch, it's impossible. I'm here to spoil alert. By the way, another ten dollar word there from myopia. That's a big, big word for us here. Appreciate that. But the uh, how, what? Well, then, okay, we have to have something though, because I mean, we've been taught that. But it sounds like you're 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 going uh, not say going after, but you're speaking to, to leaders. But we should be a leader. A leader in our life is what I'm getting from you. So how can we keep that work life just to keep the moniker going uh, more balanced? Yeah. So, and you're right. It starts with us. It starts me and you, whether you lead a team or not. There's a, there's a saying I have in the book, our lives shape our work. Nevertheless, our work shapes us. Yeah. And we have to come to that. Uh, uh, let's call it the come to Dan meeting here today. Mitch. Or maybe it's a come to Mitch meeting. It's a come to Mitch meeting. Let's, let's do that. And let's be real with ourselves. What is it that's uh, affecting us at work and what might we do with that, whether it's a conversation with our boss, ourselves, but also there's certain life factors and the things that we're in charge of. So how are your relationships? Yes. Are you tending to them? Do you have zero relationships? Are you lonely? There's just one life factor that's going to make you feel a little bit happier and maybe even blooming, dare I say. But if you're not doing the work, if you're not tending to the garden to extend right. the metaphor, you're going to end up a weed. All right. It's Christmas time, Dan. We want to have you back because you, you, you hit something that can affect everybody. You want to get a copy of the book, Work Life Bloom, How to Nurture a Team That Flourishes? Just visit danpontefract.com. And again, no combs for Dan for Christmas. <laughs> None right? whatsoever. Thank you, Dan. Great stuff.